guys uh, today in these slides we are going to discuss the free radicals and its formation and the source of formation of the free radicals and its effect on human health and the role of the antioxidants to neutralize the free radicals and to maintain the human health so here we are going to discuss many number of aspects within these three different topics but they are very much interrelated with each other hence it has been put on the same slide show uh, hopefully i will try to give more information and very wide and elaborated information for you guys so that it will be very easy to understand so coming to the next slide here we are discussing the def definition and description of the free radical where it will be a atom or the molecule which will be possessing the unpaired electron so here again it can also be defined as a molecular species capable of independent existence with an unpaired electron so the common feature is the presence of the unpaired electron where it will be excited either to accept an electron or to get donated to the other form of the molecule so here when you are going to consider under this diagram at the extreme right this below diagram is the neutral atom or the molecule which is having the paired electron in the inner orbit and the paired electrons in the outer orbit paired electrons in the outer orbit in the sense there are four pairs of electrons forming the octet here when you are going to see this atom here the inner orbit is having the paired electrons but the outer orbit is having one pair of the electron which is losing an electron because of that this is going to stand to be the free radical where this single electron will be readily accepting or readily get donated or get scavenged to the other free radical or the to the other biomolecule so here because of that what will happen it is going to snatch either it is going to snatch or it is going to get donated to the other atom of the other molecule so here this is what is going to happen so further so these atoms called free radicals scavenge the body to seek out other electrons so they can become a pair so that is what i we have discussed here now here the free radicals cause the damage to the biomolecular structure now here when you are going to consider the free radicals causing the damage when you are going to consider each biomolecular structure is going to have the carbohydrates those are going to have carbon molecules hydrogen molecules and the oxygen molecules now here when these free radicals which are having the feature of accepting or donating the electron because of their loss in an electron within their pair it is going to get reacted either of any of the biomolecular structure it can be in the proteins it can be in the lipids it can be in the dna it can be in the nitrogen bases phosphorus like this anything they can get reacted because of that what will happen it is going to get paired with those electrons of that particular biomolecular structure and they are going to damage the biomolecular structure they attack the important macromolecules leading to cell damage and homeostatic disruption now when you are going to consider homeostatic disruption 
here homeostatic is nothing but the physiological balance the physiological balance which is happening to be the natural process or the phenomena within the tissues and the organs of whole body of an organism is going to be always in a particular threshold or the concentration gradient but here because of this free radicals micromolecules are going to get damaged because of this the cell is going to act abrupt and because of that the homeostatic disruption is going to happen further is it is going to target the all kinds of the molecules in the body now as we have discussed that it has these are the free radicals they can react with any of the molecules or the atoms within the biomolecular structures so they can react with all kinds of molecules within the body major targets and adversely altered are carbohydrates lipids proteins and dna now when you are going to consider majorly targets and adversely altered here the carbohydrates present in the cell membranes or the biomembranes of the cell lipids these are also present in the biomembranes of the cell proteins they are present both in the biomembranes and within the cells and the dna you know that is the nuclear material so all these are going to have all the carbohydrates the hydrogen oxygen and the nitrogen and the phosphorus and these are going to get reacted with these particular free radicals because of that these are going to get adversely altered when they are going to get adversely altered you know that they are going to leave the mark behind within the cells and their expression the increased amount of free radicals causes various diseases as it is as going to give the adversely altered effects for these macromolecules then it is going to give the various diseases so those diseases can be like cancer diabetes cardiovascular diseases autoimmune disorders neurodegenerative diseases and aging etc so apart from this there are many more diseases also but here we have counted only those which are at the higher impact and more in number now when you are going to consider free radicals are not only dangerous they are dangerous but they are going to be dangerous when they are going to become excess in amount in the environment of the cell so these free radicals are the general by product which will be developed during the metabolic activities of the cell so these metabolic activities are required to generate the free radicals but for some conceptual activity within the cell so here the moderate levels of free radicals found beneficial to healing wounds so whatever the wounds will be present in our body let it be internal or external all these are going to be get have the is going to have the influence of the free radicals to get healed so free radicals generated by the cells mitochondria so the mitochondria is going to generate the free radical which is the powerhouse of the cell you know that it is the it is going to generate the atps and they are going to generate both the electrons which is required for the metabolic activities so the energy producing structures in the cell are actually beneficial to healing wounds so here whatever the energy producing cells they are going to benefit the healing of the wounds within the body now further features of free radical the presence of an unpaired electron results in certain common properties 
that are shared by most radicals now here when you are going to consider a free radical will going to have a unpaired electron these electrons features are going to stand common for all kind of the radicals that is the free radicals free radicals can either donate an electron to or accept an electron from other molecules this we have discussed already free radicals behave as oxidants or reductants so there can be the oxidation process during the reaction of the free radical with the molecule or the molecular structure of any of the compound within the body or it can be the reductant they can reduce themselves let me discuss some more free radical features where there these can be the features like they are electrically neutral molecules or highly unstable or electron deficit atoms or molecules are found to be excited or very reactive or paramagnetic in nature or to generate an other free radical by extracting an electron of stable molecule and last one are combined together to form neutral molecule here electrically neutral molecule in the sense if a free radical is having an odd electron that odd electron can deflect either ways as an an ionic form or cationic form because of its neutral deflection either ways or toggling of the electron to the charges it is considered to be as the electrically neutral molecule certainly they are highly unstable so here due to the lack of an electron within the outer orbit where it is going to be within the octet state because of that lack of an electron the free radical will be always highly unstable and because of the loss of that same electron they are going to be considered to be as the electron deficit atoms now here this loss of an electron in the octet which has reduced the octet to the seven electrons where three pairs and one odd electron which can be found to be having to be a excited or very reactive form of the electron either to get donated or to get accepted uh, or to get snatched the other electron from the other element of the biomolecule now here when you are going to consider the free radicals are paramagnetic in nature they deflect to the magnetic field on one charge because of this the one charge deflection or one form of the deflection it is called it as the paramagnetic when this free radical is going to react with the one more electron and get stable then that is called to be as the diamagnetic molecule there the paramagnetism is going to get neutralized so here due to that the molecule is going to get become the highly stable one further is these free radicals are to generate an other free radical by extracting an electron of stable molecule here this point acts very uh, precisely within our explanation where whatever the free radical got generated or got entered into our body either by the external means or by the internal metabolic processes there it is going to get reacted with the any of the molecule of our biomolecular structure like as already spoken can be any biomolecule uh, like the carbohydrates having carbon hydrogen oxygen or any other form of the elements where they can get reacted with them where they being the stable one but getting reacted with this particular free radical where this free radical get itself into a stable condition by putting that particular element the other element from where it is this free radical is extracting the electron is going to act as the free radical so here what will happen the 
stable form of the biomolecular structure now it has an element or the molecule or the atom which is the free radical so this is how it is generating the free radical in place of it now when you are going to consider the last point are combined together to form neutral molecule now when you are going to consider this particular free radical if you are going to get this similar kind of the free radical on the other side if you are going to get together the, both the free radicals both the free radicals this both the free radicals are going to react to become a stable form of the molecule so here though that stable form of the molecule is going to act as the neutral molecule this neutral molecule is always beneficial to system or the health so this is these are the few features of the free radicals where under the unstable conditions and also to, to under the stable conditions how they are going to react now coming to the types of the free radicals these free radicals will be of two types one will be reactive oxygen species or intermediates reactive nitrogen species in or intermediates so here reactive oxygen species or intermediates is nothing but these are the oxide based oxygen based free radicals here you can see superoxide anion hydroxyl hydro peroxyl peroxyl alkoxyl radicals non free radicals or like hydrogen peroxide hypochlorous acid ozone singlet oxygen and oxygen species so these are the oxide based oxygen based where oxygen is going to act as the free radical molecule where it is going to have the excited electron imbalance that is under this kind of the conditions of o2 oh oh ro ro h2o2 hocl o3 and this is 1o2 so this is the kind of the free radical where they are reactive oxygen they are based on the oxygen which is reactive where we are going to consider this as the species and they are also called as the intermediates and uh, when you are going to consider here next reactive nitrogen species or intermediates here the nitrogen is going to be the main atom or the molecule which is going to react with the molecular structure so here per oxy nitrite nitrogen dioxide but the major effects are seen under the ros that is the reactive oxygen species now here within this diagram you can see that these are going to get generated because of the certain factors which can be both internal and the external now here these are going to cause the reaction within the biomolecular structure of the cell now coming to the next slide free radical formation here homolytic cleavage of covalent bond in which a normal molecule fragments into each fragment retaining one of the paired electrons now when you are going to consider homolog homolytic cleavage when there is the formation of the molecular structure there will be the sharing of the electrons between the two different atoms or the molecules within the particular compound for example if you are going to take the carbohydrates itself there the carbon hydrogen and oxygen these three different elements are going to get 
attached by the bonding nature because of this what will happen during this bonding nature there will be the sharing of the electron and it is going to become a particular complex or a particular biomolecular structure when these bondings are going to cleave during this cleaving of the bonding there will be the separation of the electron pair where these bondings are get already attached because of this one of the paired electron is get retained in one of the molecule and the other electron is going to be given to the other molecule if this is going to happen during this time these molecules or the atoms are going to become the free radicals here again homolytic cleavage occurs less commonly in biological systems as it requires high energy input from ultraviolet light heat or ionizing radiations so here within the biological systems this kind of the cleavages will take place very little so here you can see it's a depiction of what are the free radicals where the free radicals are <laughs> going to act as robbers which are the deficient in energy and also they are going to damage the cells so those are caused by these factors on where are, where the free radicals are going to show the effect on the cell cell membrane and internal organs and the nucleus also now coming to the next slide free radicals how they are formed the continuation the chemicals cortisone and catechol amines created by metal stress can create free radicals so here if you are going to take these chemicals they can cause the metal stress and can create the free radicals body's free radical molecules are a natural byproduct of cell metabolism as we have already discussed in the first slide during the definition and description that i have spoken that the metabolism is where the byproduct free radical has been observed so even in the alcohol consumption it can be the any amount of the production of free radicals within the body can takes place and again polyunsaturated fat like which is found in vegetables that is vegetable oils is easily oxidized in the body and can create free radicals now here it has to be substituted with polyunsaturated fats with monosaturated fat so here when you are going to consider this polyunsaturated fat is dangerous that is it is going to create the free radicals within the body now you can see the causes of the free radicals formation or the sources now coming to the free radical source here there can be two sources of the free radical formation that is the internal source of free radical generation and the external source of the free radical generation now internal source as we have discussed already that the free radicals are the byproducts of the metabolism as the metabolism is the internal process so that cell metabolism is going to stand as the internal source of the free radical generation now under this the enzymatic reactions and the respiratory chains which takes place in the internal organelles of the cell and the phagocytosis it is also a internal process prostaglandin synthesis even that cytochrome p450 system is also a internal process of the organelle that is the mitochondria and xanthin oxidase peroxisomes inflammation and arachidonate pathways exercise exercise that we do every day even it is going to cause the metabolic 
difference and it is can it can cause the metabolic uh, byproduct as the free radical that is the ischemia reperfusion injury or the internal sources for the generation of the free radical now further when you are going to consider the external sources are non enzymatic reactions of oxygen with organic compounds any organic compounds which you are going to get into contact that is you can consume also so because of that it can happen and also it can be the ionized radiations like uv x ray gamma alpha like this and the use of the cigarette environmental pollutants certain drugs what we consume for our health pesticides industrial solvents ozone x rays etc now here you have seen a bunch of the reasons which are majorly causing the free radical formation within the human beings that is during the metabolic processes as the internal source and as the non metabolic process it will also be a little kind of uh, kind of the metabolic process only but the effect or the factor is will be the external source not the internal source now when you are going to consider here i have mentioned certain processes out of these internal and external but uh, i have taken majorly of the internal processes that is the xanthine oxidase xanthine oxidase is the kind of the xanthine oxido oxido reductase where it is a kind of the enzyme which generates reactive oxygen species these enzymes catalyzes the oxidation of hypoxanthine to xanthine and can further catalyze the oxidation of xanthine to uric acid so it is a catabolic process where they are going to catalyze where they are going to break down the xanthine to uric acid or further these enzymes play an important role in the catabolism of purines in some species including humans now here during this catabolism there will be the you can see there will be the oxidase action on the uric acids where there will be the release of co3 minus and here there will be the formation of uric acid by there will be the release of h2o plus o2 minus and here you can see per oxynitrate no plus o2 where there will be the effect on the cytochrome c reductase here there will be the effect on formation of the no plus o2 so here out of this whole reaction you have come to know that there will be the generation of the free radicals as the byproduct within this metabolic cycles now when you are going to consider the same in the peroxisomes so here in the peroxisomes you can see this metabolic activity happening where this uh, there will be the oxidases within this particular peroxisomes these are the organelles which will be present within these cells where they are going to do a catabolic process where they are going to generate the free radicals of hydrogen peroxide where this hydrogen peroxide get influenced by the metal ions where this are going to generate the hydroxyls where these hydroxyls are going to have the difference in their valence of electron and they are going to affect the cell membrane peroxisomal membrane damage now in the same manner you can see here the same has been elaborated where it can be the o2 minus or it can be the h2o plus o2 oxygen so here this is how the metabolic activities are going to become a source to generate the free radicals 
now in the same manner if you are going to consider in this uh, metabolic activity like ischemia reperfusion injury IRI or oxygenation injury is the tissue damage caused when blood supply returns to tissue that is reperfusion after a period of ischemia or lack of oxygen that is anoxia or hypoxia now here as per the description that the first stage is the ischemia that is the lack of oxygen or the anoxia or hypoxia here what will happen if you are going to see this diagram this diagram shows that there is the reduced flow of the oxygen which will be observed here this is caused because of the some depositions which is going to happen within the blood vessels due to that what will happen the blood rbcs which are carrying the oxygens they cannot deliver the oxygen and these cells which are present at that location cannot absorb the oxygen during this time what will happen there will be the reduced amount of the oxygen where these cells will be having the function of taking the oxygen from the hemoglobin or the rbcs where these are going to fail to absorb the oxygen because of that what will happen there will be the reduced oxygen supplied to the cells where anaerobic glycolysis is going to increase and the this leads to the formation of the lactate and which is going to reduce the formation of the ph due to the lack in the ph the activity of the mitochondria is going to reduce now here on the other side the same reduced oxygen condition of the cell leads to the atp hydrolysis which will lead to the efflux of the hydrogen atoms and influx of the sodium where it is also going to lead to the efflux of the sodium and influx of the calcium this calcium influences the mptp opening of the mitochondria it is a kind of catabolic process where that is not needed here as we are discussing the free radical formation so we are making it to very short and very understandable now here after this process if these cells are going to get the oxygen that is the oxygen will be restored this ischemia past cells are going to get the oxygen this oxygen will be restored and this is going to be because of the restoration of the oxygen the formation of the lactic acid will take place this increases the ph the ph is going to inf induct the ph is going to induct the mptp opening where it is going to give the catabolic process uh, in the mitochondria where the mitochondria releases the reactive oxygen species now here the restored oxygen again is going to have the oxygen which is going to combine to form the reactive oxygen species the same reactive oxygen species again is going to induct the signal to mptp opening at the mitochondria now the same ros that is the reactive oxygen species is going to reduce or decrease the influx of the sodium and efflux of the hydrogen and also it is going to reduce or stop the efflux of the calcium and influx of the sodium so this is how the reperfusion is going to be going to generate this particular form of the free radicals within the this particular phenomena of ischemia reperfusion injury so this is regarding how the metabolic activities of the cells during the imbalance in the blood flow with the oxygen or not with the oxygen is going to lead to the generation of the ros reactive oxygen species these are the metabolic functions where we are seeing the formation of the 
free radicals where these are going to become the source for the free radical formation within the cells now when you are going to consider the internal sources these internal sources are going to generate the free radical either by accidentally or deliberately now we are going to discuss the accidental kind of the free radical generation now here that is going to happen when there is the interface of the bacterium and the activated phagocyte when you are going to consider interface of the bacterium bacterium is nothing but when the bacterium is going to infect the body it is going to be considered as the pathogen and that pathogen is going to be get engulfed that is by the macrophages in the form of the phagocytosis process now here when you are going to consider this particular process is going to be get activated because of the influence of the bacterium these bacterium are going to get influenced on the body accidentally suddenly because of that this particular process is going to takes place during this process what will happen the pathogen is going to get engulfed and that will be moved into the cell where a phagosome will be formed here i have made two diagrams this is the section kind of the diagram which is above the below is the complete diagram here you can see pathogens engulfing by the macrophage and it is going to be moved into the cell and it will be surrounded or taken into a vesicle it is called it as the phagosome that is the body phagosome that is the engulfed body within this here what will happen these phagosomes are going to get combined with the lysosome so here after the lysosome combination it is going to become a combination of a complex of a phagolysosome here you can see phagolysosome which is going to be like this now during this particular phenomena what will happen there will be the consumption of oxygen that is the this particular macrophages are going to consume the oxygen in more amount that is the increase of the consumption of oxygen takes place and the phenomena is called the respiratory burst now this process of respiratory burst produces reactive oxygen containing molecules that are antimicrobial now when you are going to consider the lysosome when it is going to combine here during this process that is after formation of the phagolysosome there will be the action of this particular oxygen reactive oxygen containing molecules act on the pathogen because of that the pathogen is going to be get killed so here it is the antimicrobial activity by reactive oxygen containing molecules of the phagolysosome the oxygen containing molecules are toxic to both the invader that is the pathogen and the cell itself so they are kept in compartments inside the cell this method of killing invading microbes by using the reactive oxygen containing molecules is referred as oxygen dependent intracellular killing of which there are two types again so that will be di discussed now after this what will happen whatever the pathogen has been killed that will be removed by the macrophage cell and it will be liberated into the external environment as the waste now the first type of this particular oxygen dependent production of a superoxide here also we have 
discussed that superoxide or hydrogen peroxide and other ROS will be produced during this particular accidental process of the interface of the bacterium and the activated phagocyte and followed by this particular phenomena this particular oxygen dependent intracellular killing is of two types so that in that first type is the production of superoxide which is an oxygen rich bacteria killing substance the superoxide is converted to hydrogen peroxide and singlet oxygen by an enzyme called superoxide dismutase superoxide also react with the hydrogen peroxide to produce hydroxyl radicals which assist in killing the invading microbes also can be in the presence of redox active metal ions guys as per the explanation here we can see that the the superoxide is going to form the hydrogen peroxide and the singlet oxygen in the presence of the superoxide dismutase so here you can see the superoxide is going to react and uh, there will be the formation of the hydrogen peroxide now here the same reaction has been depicted here this is the one form of the reaction and here again we have taken the similar similar reaction so you can observe the reaction both here in the single equation and or here in the multiple equations so here when you are going to consider the superoxide is going to react or get converted in the presence of the superoxide dismutase to the hydrogen peroxide and the singlet oxygen here also you can see that the superoxide is going to give rise to the H2O2 plus singlet oxygen. Now, when you are going to consider again, the superoxide also react with the hydrogen peroxide to produce hydroxyl radicals which assist in the killing of the invading microbe. So here, the superoxide has formed the hydroxyl radicals and uh, when you are going to consider the same further is that also can be in the presence of the redox active metal ions hydroxyl radical can be produced via the metal ion now when you are going to consider in this equation we have seen the superoxide action here and also here the production of the hydroxyl radicals when you are going to consider here the presence of the metal ion is going to be one of the reason for the formation of the hydroxyl radical so here this is how the action of the enzymes metabolically or the presence of the metal ion metabolically in the internal source first type that is the oxygenated dependent production of the superoxide is going to takes place and the hydroxyl radical is also going to take place and also the singlet oxygen is also going to take place so this is regarding the first type and the second type is in this it involves the use of enzyme myeloperoxidase from neutrophil granules when granules fuse with a phagosome myeloperoxidase is released into the phagolysosome and this enzyme uses hydrogen peroxide and chlorine to create hypochlorite a substance used in domestic bleach <coughs> hypochlorite is extremely toxic to bacteria and also to the cells now here you can see this will be the neutrophil here within the neutrophil it is having the phagolysosome the reaction which has been shown here the same has been depicted here the enzyme myeloperoxidase is going to be present in the form of the neutrophil granules and it is going to be present in the phagosome 
and after the formation of the phagolysosome the enzyme uses hydrogen peroxide so here this is the hydrogen peroxide and it is going to take the chlorine to create the hypochlorite here this is the myeloperoxidase enzyme and further a substance used is to domestic bleach domestic bleach in the sense here after the killing of the microbes that has to be cleaned from the cells that is the domestic bleach where this domestic bleach is the hypochlorite which is extremely toxic here this is the hypochlorous which is extremely toxic and it is going to show its effect as the free radical so here these are the two types of the oxygen dependent production of the free radical the superoxide hydrogen peroxide hypochlorite or any other form of the free radical now here this is the accidental type of the free radical production during the metabolism within the cells now when you are going to consider the free radical production in cells where it is because of the deliberate reactions is the here also we are discussing the same phenomena but in the different manner now when you are going to consider there is also a large body evidence indicating that oxygen radicals are involved in intracellular and intracellular signaling now when you are going to consider intracellular or intracellular signaling these both comes under the signal transduction phenomena where it is going to play a major role in inducting a signal to perform a particular function within a cell by the other cells to a particular cell or by the other factors within a particular targeted cell that is what here the things are going to happen now when you are going to consider within this the phagocyte NADPH oxidase FOX is a well characterized enzyme that generates high levels of superoxide and secondary oxidants in phagocytes as part of the microbicidal defense mechanisms by which these cells function in host defense now here it is as similar as here what we have discussed but here the mechanism or the metabolic activity is different compared to this so here what is happening the enzyme phagocyte NADPH oxidase which is shortly called as FOX is going to characterize the generation of the high levels of superoxides and secondary oxidants which will be responsible for the microbicidal defense which are going to act as the defense as the host defense which is going to act as the host defense for the infections here you can see in the diagram that microbes inflammatory mediators which are going to act on the cell so here whatever the microbicidal defense has been generated in the form of the superoxide and the secondary oxidants are going to act on this particular infections or the pathogens here what is happening is that the catalytic muati of fox is the membrane associated flavocytochrome gp91 fox which is inactive in resting phagocytes now here when you are going to consider catalytic muati catalytic you know that every enzyme is a catalyst where it is going to act as the catalyst and it is going to complete the reaction muati is nothing but here it has two functions that is it can rest the metabolic activity or it can activate the metabolic activity that is the function either it can switch on or switch off the activity that is the main feature of this fox enzyme so it has the catalytic muati activity on the associated flavocytochrome gp91 fox which is the transmembrane protein which is the receptor 
again or it can be a yeah signaling path when you are going to consider which is inactive interesting phagocyte but becomes activated in the phagosomal membrane by assembly with regulatory subunits such as p47 fox p67 fox and rac here you can see p47 p67 and p40 and here it's the rac and here one more a new family of homologues of gp91 fox the nadph oxidase dual oxidase it can be nadph oxidase nox or dual oxidase family which now contains seven membrane so here the complete set complex is the family it will be having the seven membrane has recently been described and these are expressed in various cell types now these are going to form the assembly when there is the microbial influence where there will be the influence of the microbial because of that what will happen this assembly is going to form and due to this what will happen this assembly is going to be initiated by the phagocyte nadph oxidase fox here you can see it is going to make the resting phagocyte to activated phagocyte because of this what will happen this is going to express the various cell types including the epithelium smooth measure cells and the endothelium these enzymes deliberately generate superoxide and secondarily produce other reactive oxygen species including hydrogen peroxide now you can see here there is the action of the fox enzyme that is the phagocyte nadph oxidase which is going which has influenced the formation of this particular complex that is the seven members of the family which which are the homologues homologues in the sense these are the complex of the proteins which has been made and here they are going to be going to take part in the formation of the oxides that is the radicals that is it can be the superoxide or the secondary to produce the hydrogen peroxide it is happening deliberately here it is happening deli deliberately where they are going generating this particular free radicals so this is regarding this particular mechanism of the production of the free radicals deliberately on catalytic reaction basis now next is another major source of free radicals under normal circumstances is the electron leakage during the electron transport chains that is electron transport chain in the mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum to molecular oxygen generating superoxide here during the cytochrome c oxidase complex is highly efficient to reducing oxygen to water and it releases very few partly reduced intermediates however small amounts of superoxide anion and peroxide peroxide are produced by electron transport chain now here already we have spoken that the formation of the free radicals within the mitochondria that is by the electron transport chain is helpful in healing if there is the formation of these free radicals at the optimum required level but whatever the process of the formation of the free radicals to the optimum level or to the excess level is going to remain the same so that is what here we are trying to say so the cytochrome c oxidase complex is highly efficient in reducing oxygen to water and it releases very few partly reduced intermediates here reduced intermediates in the sense the whatever the reduced form of the products has been formed that is called it is the reduced intermediates however small amounts of superoxides anion and peroxide are produced by the electron transport chain 
Particularly important is the reduction of coenzyme Q in complex 3 as a highly reactive UB semiquinone. UB semiquinone free radical is formed as an intermediate in the Q cycle. Now, here cytochrome 3 coenzyme Q. Here there will be the release of the superoxide, formation of the hydrogen peroxide, and metal ion effect, formation of the hydroxyl group. And there will be the reduction by the enzyme, formation of the water reduced, and it can also catalyze to the water that is hydrogen peroxide, catalyzed to the water and the oxygen. Now, UB semiquinone free radical is formed as a intermediate in the Q cycle. So, this semiquinone or UB semiquinone is a free radical resulting from the removal of one hydrogen atom with its electron during the process of dehydrogenation of a hydroquinone such as hydroquinone itself or catechol to a quinone or alternatively the addition of a single H atom to a quinone it is highly unstable now here during this process a particular benzene ring kind of the hydroxyl has been formed that is here they have mentioned a form of the catechol hydroquinone itself or catechol catechol in the sense that is the benzene ring kind of the hydroxyl where the hydroxyl will be attached to the benzene ring and due to that produ production of this particular quinone or alternative it is going to add up the single H atom to form the quinone so because of this it is going to become unstable so here again it is the hydroxyl group formation so this unstable UB semiquinone species can lead to electron leakage when electrons transfer directly to oxygen forming superoxide now here during the metabolic process of the electron transport chain there are certain byproducts formed those byproducts formed are literally unstable so here what will happen there will be the leakage of the electron and forming of the oxygen or into the superoxide as we have discussed here well coming to this slide here we discuss the action of the production of proteins in the sense protein folding process is going to take place in the endoplasmic reticulum where certain redox communications is going to take place where the redox communication is going to act as the mediators where there will be the possible formation or production of the reactive oxygen species by possible surrounding sources now here the diagram which has been taken into consideration is showing the folding of the protein here you can see the protein folding is taking place and uh, this is ER ER is nothing but the endoplasmic reticulum and it is the cytosol where the ER is present now here there is a long process of the formation of the protein folding during which there will be the protein folding process and there will be the formation of the hydrogen peroxide and the superoxide where this will be the this will be considered by the glutathione reductase it is an enzyme which neutralizes the certain free radicals here also you can see with different sources there is the influx of the oxygen and also here you can see there are certain toxin compounds which are going to form the ROS which will be recycled recycled in the sense here these ROSs will remain ROS but neutralized compounds safe compounds so here in this manner there will be the release of the free radicals 
during the electron transport chain process so and also here it is the protein processing or the protein folding processing within the endoplasmic reticulum so here coming to the next point a major source of the free radicals that contribute to reperfusion injury reperfusion injury which we have studied earlier two slides earlier two or three slides earlier which has been again spoken here where it is going to cause or remain as the major source of the free radicals that has been contributed through reperfusion injury in electron transport chain the electron transport chain produces free radicals at very low rate under basal conditions in the normal conditions but at elevated rates during conditions such as ischemia i have spoken very briefly and very cleanly that ischemia and reperfusion is going to produce the high amount of the free radicals within the mitochondria reperfusion induced increase in the free radical production are often attributed to declines in the activities of electron transport chain complex upon ischemia that could in turn lead to an impaired overall rate of the oxidative phosphorylation here in the sense he when there is the ischemia reperfusion injury happening during that time the stress or whatever the influence has been or the stimulus has been created on the mitochondria it is going to lead to the impaired overall rate of oxidative phosphorylation oxidative phosphorylation is the one of the main metabolic process of the mitochondria but here due to the ischemia reperfusion injury or re reoxygenation of the blood flow is going to create such a stimulus or influence on the mitochondria of those cells within the uh, blood flow vessels flowing vessels is going to impair the oxidative phosphorylation because of that it is going to lead those cells to a different form of the expression it can be a major disease symptom so this is regarding the free radical leakage during the electron transport chain in mitochondria and also the endoplasmic reticulum in this slide uh, we will discuss the unusual circumstances which are other than the internal source of free radical production in cells those can be ionizing radiations ultraviolet light and other forms of high energy exposure free radicals are produced in cells in general by electron transfer reactions which can be enzymatically mediated or non enzymatically mediated now here when we are consider electron transfer reaction is nothing but here the reaction is going to be taking place on the high energy basis where it will be substituted or added by ionizing radiations of ultraviolet or x ray or gamma rays so here because of this energy exposure there will be the electron shift or transfer where it will be at electron transfer reaction either it can this electron transfer reaction can be aided by or mediated by enzymes or it can be non enzymatic also now here within this diagram you can see that the dna the nuclear genetic material is under the stress created by the deficient or difference in the electron neutron or proton under the alpha helium 4 where it will be the direct impact on the dna molecular structure where this impact is going to takes place by reacting these electrons of alpha helium 4 with the elements of the dna now when you are going to consider the indirect form here you can see that the x ray or gamma rays are going to show the impact on the water molecules 
where it generates the free radicals releasing the oxygen which is again going to get converted to the superoxide and the peroxides now further after this action both the direct and indirect it is going to lead to the formation of lead to the dna damage this is going either it can push the dna to its repair mechanism through polymerases and if there is a failure in the dna repair it can proceed for the cell death if it is the dna damage if it is non repairable again it is the cell death if the dna damage is not pushed to the dna repair or non repairable damage processes where the necrosis or the cell death has to take place where if it is not going to take place if the cell replicates with the dna after the dna replication it is going to lead to the hazardous diseases like many you know as such now here this is regarding the unusual circumstances the usual circumstances what we studied are internal metabolic processes which will be responsible for the release of the free radicals so here this is how the free radical production takes place in cells now in this slide we are going to discuss oxidative stress and human health here in this we can see that ox oxidative stress is defined as the state in which the level of toxic reactive oxygen intermediates overcomes the endogenous antioxidant defense of the host here we have come across uh, in previous slides that many number of the enzymes takes place in the neutralization of this free radical generated that is the hydrogen peroxide oxygen here you can see that it has been neutralized and also here with the help of the nadph nox4 again there can be the formation and again there will be the neutralization by the help of the glutathione reductase enzyme so like this there will be many antioxidants which are endogenous within the body they will be produced so these are going to be readily active to neutralize the produced free radicals either in the form of any reactive oxygen species or intermediates but here what will happen there will be the more amount of the production of the reactive oxygen intermediates or the species where the free radicals will oxidative free radicals will be produced high in number the frequency is going to increase within the cell environment so here what will happen because of that the oxidative stress is created within the cell or the environment so here what will happen because of this the homeostatic or the physiological balance which will be present within the cell and around the tissue of those cell types is going to be get disturbed so here because of this the these free radicals are going to act upon the lipid cellular lipids proteins nucleic acids leading to changes in their structure and function or local injury and eventual organ dysfunction so here so many uh, probabilities can happen with different mo molecular biomolecular structures where they can act upon these many biomolecules so here because of this there can be the chances of eventual organ dysfunction or the organ failure so lipids are probably the most susceptible biomolecules to free radical attack as they are readily available and they are the freely pro provided surface either it can be the outer environment of the cell or within the cytosol the biomembranes are going to be get readily available because of that what will happen the lipids which are present in the biomolecules are uh, sorry biomembranes are going to get readily affected by these free radicals so oxidative stress is now thought to make a significant contribution to all inflammatory diseases so here whatever the inflammatory diseases inflammatory diseases in the sense here the physiological normal physiological functions is going to take the other way to take the other way of its 
uh, activity because of that what will happen there will be the difference in the function of that particular tissue type so here the inflammation is going to take place so the inflammatory diseases are going to have different symptoms like they can be the formation of the tumor they can be the formation of the uh, pain there can be many more other form of the unusual medical symptoms which are going to take place now here when you are going to consider the oxidative stress diagram under this you can come across two types sources that is endogenous exogenous endogenous we have studied that it can be because of mitochondria metabolism lysosome peroxisomes inflammation inflammasomes immune system so these are the endogenous we also came across exogenous the radiation chemicals pathogens so here these are the exo genus sources further these can lead to the negative effects and the positive effects if they are going to lead to the negative effects like dna rna membranes and proteins damages takes place genetic mutations takes place chromosomes instability gene expression modification so all these are going to happen if it is a positive effect there can be killing of pathogen there can be the metabolism regulation signal it can it is going to displace so here when there is the action of the antioxidant when there is the action of the antioxidant then there will be the less reactive molecules so here this is correspondent with this window so here this when there are antioxidants there will be the less reactive molecules when there is the absence of the antioxidants there will be the more reactive molecules so it can lead to these negative effects so this is what regarding this particular depiction further is here you can see that the dna is the normal dna where the oxidation oxidative molecule is going to act on the dna where dna is going to get damaged now again this transition abnormality is going to get modify the protein this protein is going to misfolding is going to form a misfolding of the protein because of that what will happen the biomolecular structure of the particular component or the biomolecule is going to be different because of that the functionality of that protein is going to be missed the normal functionality of the protein is going to be missed within the particular cell during its metabolic activity now if this protein is related to any hormone or to any enzyme definitely it is going to be a big aberration within the physiological function of that cell now when you are going to consider this this action of the oxidative species reactive oxidative species or reactive nitrogen species will be on the lipid where peroxidation is going to take place where the cuticle of the cell is going to be get affected by this ROS or RNS so here this reaction leads to the damage of the biomembrane now you can see if there is the action of the ROS or RNS on the DNA then the normal protein takes part in the carbonylation where it is going to lead to the irregular structure of the protein where it is going to further lead to the protein aggregation or can lead to the proteolysis breakdown now here when the protein has been synthesized if the protein is going to get affected the aberrated one then the proteolytic enzymes are going to act upon it and they are going to break down it so here either if it is going to form protein aggregation that is the unwanted protein where it is the irregular structure of the protein that it is also going to get into the influence of the proteolytic enzymes and it is going to take part in the breakdown so this is what regarding the oxidative stress how it is going to act upon all the 
biomolecules which are got affected by the ROS and RNS. Well guys, in this slide we will discuss the oxidative stress and lipids. Here, this is the one of the best known toxic effects of oxygen radicals which is going to cause damage to cellular membranes where it can be of plasma membrane, mitochondrial biomembrane, endomembrane systems, it can be nuclear membrane systems also which is initiated by a process known as lipid peroxidation. Here it is the lipids which is hiding behind this logo. Lipids, lipid peroxidation. A common target for peroxidation is unsaturated fatty acids present in membrane phospholipids. So here from this unsaturated fatty acids it will be very easy to steal the electron by the free radical. Now here the reactions involving radicals occur in chain reactions that a hydrogen is abstracted from the fatty acids by hydroxyl rad radical leaving a carbon centered radical as part of the fatty acid now here you can see a diagram this is the unsaturated fatty acid here they have mentioned or noted this particular part where it has been elaborated here where it is having a hydrogen molecule at the carbon atom now this has been abstracted that has been taken out by the hydrox to form the hydroxyl radical where the carbon has been centered with a valence electron or the reson resonance has been created here now here this is going to act as the centered carbon centered radical now that radical then reacts with oxygen to yield the peroxy radical which can then react with other fatty acids or proteins now there will be the reaction of this particular carbon centered radical with the oxygen molecule so here this oxygen molecule is going to get attached with the carbon centered radical and here it is going to act as the peroxyl radical here this peroxyl radical is excited to react with the other lipids where this radical is going to generate the other free radicals from the stable molecules which are present in the biomolecular structures now further in addition to effects on phospholipids radicals can also directly attack membrane proteins and induce lipid lipid reactions lipid protein reaction and protein protein cross linking so all of which obviously have effects on membrane function here cross linkings in the sense it can because of this particular free radical reaction can lead to the biomembrane destructurization where the irregular structure can takes place because of that the membrane lipids can have numerous effects including increased membrane rigidity and decreased activity of membrane bound enzymes so there will be the difference in the sodium pumps altered activity of membrane receptors that is to the signal signaling of the uh, outer external or uh, induction signals or stimulus signals to the cells to take part in any metabolic activities or altered permeability uh, you know that the membranes are semi permeable in their nature in the nature so there will be the alteration in the permeability so this is the oxidative stress which will be created on the lipids where it will lead to the difference in the homeostasis within the particular cell membranes so or the biomembranes of the cell let it be the cell membrane or that is the plasma membrane or the mitochondrial membrane or endomembranes or the nuclear membranes so this is what the major difference will be seen within this particular oxidative stress 
on the lipids well uh, coming to the next slide here we are going to discuss the oxidative stress and proteins now here you know that oxidative stress is nothing but if the free radicals are going to be present in excess in number in the environment of the cell it is going to readily react with any of the biomolecules which are present within the cell environment or to the external of the cell environment now here when you are going to consider the proteins and the oxidative stress of the oxygen or oxygenated radicals here the proteins are not so readily reactive with these particular free radicals unless they are in the environment of the focused on a particular site of the protein so here if there should be two conditions that the accumulation of the particular free radical should be high in number where that particular free radical has to be focused on a particular site of the protein then only the oxidative stress is going to be caused on the protein so one way that the damage is focused is if the protein binds a transition metal ion so here there is a condition of the attaching of the or binding of the transition metal ion the most frequently found metal binding sites in proteins are for iron copper zinc and calcium the transition metals favor protein atoms nitrogen and sulfur typically from histidine and cysteine side chains now here these are the two which are readily going to get reacted with the transition metal ions where these transition metal ions will react with the nitrogen and sulfur where these transition metals are the one which are going to have valence electrons or the electrons they used to combine with other elements so here they are going to have a readily reacting valence electron in their orbits which are present in more than one shell this is the reason why they often exhibit several common oxidation states so here these transition metals will react with this nitrogen of the amino acid or the sulfur molecule of the or the element of this amino acid so here these transition ions are going to exhibit the common oxidation state so here further is protein containing amino acids such as the methionine cysteine arginine and histidine seem to be most vulnerable to oxidation now here these are the main four main amino acids which are vulnerable to the oxidation now coming to the next point methionine cysteine hemocysteine and taurine here when you are going to consider from this point to this point this last point we have discussed about the oxidation of the amino acid related with the transition metal ion here from here the, the point is going to change with the sulfur site so here don't confuse this particular points with this particular points here methionine cysteine hemocysteine and taurine are the four common sulfur containing amino acids but only the first two are incorporated into proteins so majorly the methionine and cysteine are used or incorporated in the proteins as they are going to have the sulfur compound in them it is going to be get reacted it is going to be the site of the reaction of the oxidative radicals within proteins many of the methionine residues are buried in the hydrophobic core but some which are exposed are susceptible to oxidative damage you know that in proteins these proteins are very much secured where they are going to have the hydrophobic core where this core is going to keep safe the all amino acids where it is not going to come under the action of any of the water molecules and here one more thing is that 
if this methionine or cysteine molecule hydrophobic cores which are hiding or buried in the proteins if they are get exposed definitely they are going to come in the contact of the oxidative damage if the oxidative free radicals are present in that surroundings because of that what will happen this particular hydro hydrophobic cores are going to react with the oxygen react to oxygen species and it is going to lead to the damage of those proteins now here you can see that methionine is having a sulfur element and here and in cysteine here hemocysteine here taurine here free radicals mediated protein modifications increases susceptibility to enzyme proteolysis now if this particular let it be the metal ion action that is the transition metal oxygen or the metal ion oxygen or this sulfur containing amino acid where the action of the oxidative radical takes place here if this are going to happen this is going to make that particular protein vulnerable for being to get susceptible to an enzyme that is the proteolytic enzyme which is going to cleave the protein uh, as the protein is not in the normal structure which is required by the homeostasis process within the tissue or the cell this enzyme proteolysis is going to definitely act upon this particular protein oxidative damage to protein products may affect the activity of enzyme receptors and membrane transport if that particular protein which is got reacted with the oxygenated radical where this or free radical is has already damaged the protein but the protein is going to get incorporated with either the receptors enzymes hormones and the membrane transport mechanisms then it is going to show the different activity of the that particular component now coming to the next slide this is also the same oxidative stress and proteins where the oxidatively damaged protein products may contain very reactive groups that may contribute to damage to membrane and many cellular functions so here you know that each component or the protein which is present in the biomembranes are specific to their activity where they are going to send the signal where these signals are going to act as the cascade to perform a particular function or the perform a particular phenomena within the cell or to induct a signal to the neighboring tissue cells now here if these particular proteins are going to get oxidatively damaged then they are going to show the different action compared to the normal action now when you are going to consider this different action can be very reactive signals can be very much hazardous to that particular cell type and the tissue peroxyl radical is usually considered to be free radical species for the oxidation of proteins so majorly absorbed free radical which is going to re react with this particular proteins is the peroxyl radical reactive oxygen species can damage proteins and produce carbonyls and other amino acid modifications including formation of methionine sulfoxide and protein peroxide now protein oxidation affects the alteration of signal transduction mechanism enzyme activity heat stability and proteolysis susceptibility which leads to aging now here difference in the protein because of this particular oxidative damage is going to cause this many uh, changes specific changes that is the transduction signal transduction mechanism is going to change enzyme activity is going to change heat stability of that particular protein or the enzyme or the hormone is going to change and proteolysis susceptibility many proteins are going to be 
not susceptible to the proteolytic enzyme as because of their normal functionality if the protein changes its normal functionality then it is understood that the protein will be definitely get influenced by the acted by the proteolysis enzyme so the proteolysis enzyme is going to break down this protein which leads to aging aging in the here because of any of the improper functionality of the protein either in the enzyme or in the signal transduction mechanism or if the protein break does, uh, breakdowns by the proteolysis enzyme then it is going to lead to the aging of the particular tissue so here reactive oxygen oxygen species are especially known for their high reactivity towards sulfur containing amino acids and metal containing cofactor sites in proteins causing reversible and irreversible action of many different proteins and representing a major threat towards the cellular proteome now here this particular explanation will be seen here here you can see methylene methionine sulfon methionine sulfoxime methionine sulfoxide so here these are the products byproducts which has been formed after the action of the free radicals that is the ROS free radicals so these are the byproducts which has been seen where these are irreversible modifications protein unfolding and degradation will takes place now here these are the reversible modification in these reversible modifications the redox homeostasis is nothing but that there are certain mechanisms within the genome where they are going to reverse the modifications which has happened due to the reactive oxygen species that is the meaning of this so here the reversible modif these modifications can be reversed so there can be achieved the homeostasis that is the normalcy of the cell and the tissue hello guys so in this slide we are going to discuss the oxidative stress and the dna and rna here we are going to discuss this particular diagram where we can see that uh, there is the influence of the mitochondria and the pha and the quinone metabolism and the nadph oxidase influence and the particles surface and solubles which are going to have the influence on this particular internal organs and the inflammation macrophages and pmn activity which is going to all these are going to generate the free radicals and also the metal ions which are going to readily combine with the within the metabolic process to generate the free radicals you can see the hydroxyl ion peroxy nitrate hydrogen peroxide and the superoxide and here when you are going to consider after the influence of these free radicals the dna is going to get into the damaged form so here there can be the chances of the dna repair under the oxidant defense there can be chances of the dna which will proliferate with the cells that is the replication will takes place and the cell proliferation will takes place and there can be the chances of the direct dna damage identification and apoptosis or the cell death now here what will happen dna damage proliferation if it is going to take place then the further coming offspring cells are going to be the mutated form the mutagenesis is going to be seen in those cells and there can be the high chances of the cancer now here if there is no dna repair that is there is if there is no dna repair and if there is no apoptosis of the dna damaged cell then there will be the chances of the dna replication and proliferation of those mutated damaged dna damaged cell where they can lead to the cancer now here this is the one of the very brief diagram depicting the how 
there can be the chances of the cancer formation after the high level of the free radicals formation within the environment of the cell where it can influence the dna damage experiments also clearly provide evidence that dna and rna are susceptible to oxidative damage and oxidizing radicals readily attack dna if they are formed in its vicinity as has been clearly the case demonstrated by radiation biologists we have already seen here in this particular diagram here we can see that the radiation x-ray gamma rays are going to reduce the water molecule and generates the superoxide or the peroxide and they are going to influence the molecules present in the dna and there we have come across these two pathways where there can be the repair of the dna after it's damaged by the free radicals or it can be the direct cell death if there is no repair if the damaged dna bypasses the dna repair and also the cell death or the apoptosis or the necrosis process it is going to lead to the mutated cell form that is the mutagenesis phenomena is going to take place so here it is going to lead to the formation of the cancer in the same manner that is what the radiation biologist has suggested that there is the chances of the dna damage where the chances are very high one major consequence of oxidative stress is oxidatively induced dna damage which include base modification there can be the high chances of base modifications a basic sites and stand breaks here base modification base is the nitrogen base it can be the deoxyribose nucleic any nucleotide deoxyribose nucleic acid any nucleotide adenine guanine cytosine thymine or uracil they are going to be influenced by this particular free radical free radicals are the elements which are going to react with the any of the element of the nitrogen base so here because of that what will happen there will be the base modification takes place there will be the a basic site attachments or the modifications takes place and strand breaks strand breaks are going to take place the strand breaks will be because of the phosphorus backbone phosphate backbone which is going to break down where it can be the because of the influence of the free radical oxidative damage lesions can block essential process such as transcription and replication or can induce mutations now here it is a very important point where after the oxidative damage within the dna it can lead to the upstream the essential process taking place that is the transcription and replication can slow down where it can be it can it can lead to the induced mutations so it is a aberrant it is a aberrant condition where if there is no transcription or the replication is taking place within the cell so it can lead to the aberrant condition so it is the induced mutation by the oxidative stress or the oxidative free radicals oxidative damage to dna is especially problematic since dna cannot be resynthesized or turned over so here once there is the dna damage the dna cannot be resynthesized unless it can be repaired if that particular damage is unrepairable then it is a problematic thing because of that what will happen the resynthesis of the dna cannot be repaired or it cannot be turned over that is it can we cannot turn over the primes because the if the dna is is not able to be repaired then it cannot be turned over reactive oxygen species which include reagents such as superoxide anions hydrogen peroxide and hydroxyl radicals can be produced from oxidative metabolism in mitochondria and other endogenous sources such as peroxisomes and inflammatory cells this point you know very well because discussed all 
earlier itself that organelles of the cell will be responsible for this particular reactive oxygen species to be generated now mechanism of oxidative stress induced genetic and epigenetic alterations here already we have said that the high level or high amount high aggregation of the oxidative radicals can lead to the induced genetic and epigenetic alterations that is genetic alterations are within the genetic material epigenetic alterations are relating to or arising from non-genetic influences on gene expression so here the epigenetic alterations are within the non-genetic expressions which is caused by the oxidative free radicals further here in this diagram you can see that a little what we have spoken now that has been described that is the ROS influences the DNA and repair of the oxidative DNA damage will take place and base accession repair will take place replication restart mechanism will take place and the activate it activates the DNA damage response, facilitates base excision repair at site of lesions and monitors replication for progression. So the genome is going to get stable, cellular adaptation and homeostasis takes place. Whereas if the genetic response to oxidative stress is going to take place, the classical regulation if it is going to take place, then epigenetic regulation is also has to be taken place so one damage will be like this that is the genetic damage this will be the epigenetic damage further activates redox regulated gene expression remodels chromatin here in this there is no remodulation here there is only the repair here the chromatin remodels maintains homeostatic regulation as per the damage has caused according to that the homeostatic regulation will be maintained further both the forms can act genome stability cellular adaptation and homeostasis as per the changes within them you have you should not consider both are normal here it is different and here it is different here it is normal cell type with normal dna here it is not so here remodeling of the chromatin has already taken place so here the genome stability and the homeostasis and cellular adaptation is going to take place as per the remodeling has been taken place here it is normal as per what the earlier normal cells are present now here the next point is it has been reported that especially in aging and cancer dna is considered as a major target it is therefore vulnerable and important target now here with respect to the cancer and aging it is considered to be as the vulnerable target there seems little possibility that the dna sequence damage may spread into chain reaction it is nothing but as the reactive oxygen species act upon the dna the dna repair mechanism will take place in the action and it is going to lead to the highly highly correct dna it is going to remove all the whatever the oxidative stress or the oxidative reaction has been taken place in the elements of the dna so because of that what will happen there is the little possibility that the dna sequence damage may spread into the into a chain reaction a chain reaction is also nothing but here it can be the chance of, of a dna base dna base after getting into contact of the oxidative free radical where this oxidative radical reaction has already given a free radical within the dna base that be dna base can all can generate a new free radical within the dna that is the chances which is spoken here that is the chain reaction so here this chain reaction will not take place because dna is highly conserved due to its repair mechanism so there is a very little possibility that the dna sequence damage may spread into the chain reaction again for dna damage to occur it must either be site specific or it must elude repair system so a site specific in the sense that it should dam 
damage the DNA in such a site that the repair should not take place. So it should make a particular strand break at that particular point where DNA polymerase repair repair DNA should not take part in the repairing of the this particular strand breaks and it must or it must elude the repair system so either of this is not possible before replication occurs leading to mutation so every replication of the cell or duplication of the cell is followed after the DNA replication or duplication so during the DNA replication or duplication before to that there is the high chances of the DNA repair so because of that what will happen the DNA is going to get corrected so there is the little possibility that the DNA sequence damage may spread into a chain reaction so further is oxidative nucleotides or can be like glycol DTG and 8 hydroxy 2 deoxy guanosine is found to be increased during oxidative damage to DNA under UV radiation or free radical damage. Now here this is the external unusual form of the DNA damage where there is the chances of the oxidative damage formation due to the UV radiation. Mitochondrial DNA are more susceptible to oxidative damage that have role in many diseases including cancer. So we have already spoken about this in the internal source of the DNA production where there are the high chances of the mitochondrial DNA where oxidative damage and it can lead to the disease like the cancer. 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine can be used as biological marker for oxidative stress on DNAs. The most widely used tools to measure oxidative DNA damage are the comet assay, PCR based assays, immunoassays and mass spectrometry based approaches. You know these experiments so I hope that I no need to explain this because it is going to give a very long slide. So here this one is the one of the biological marker which will be considered for the DNA damage. DNA damage where it will be because of the UV radiations. So here again I want to say that the UV radiations are causing the oxidative damage. Oxidative damage is one you know that all oxygen oxygen related radicals reactive oxygen species where this can be the internal source also if it is induced it can be the external unusual source also so there can be the both the sources where there can be the formation of this oxidative damage to the DNA so here this is regarding the both the slides this is regarding the both the slides explaining the oxidative stress on DNA and RNA in these slides I have spoken only major majorly about the DNA itself the same thing holds good for RNA also because all are the nitrogen bases and have the similar backbone structures and also the similar polymer kind of the structures so here this is regarding the oxidative stress on DNA and RNA well guys so till here we have come across the free radicals free radical production oxidative stress created by the free radicals on different uh, biomolecular structures so we have discussed three things and uh, now we are going to discuss the protection against free radicals that is uh, with the help of the antioxidants where these antioxidants interact with the free radicals and neutralizes the free radicals thus preventing them from causing any damage so here before the free radical act upon any biomolecular structure element they before to that this particular antioxidants will be readily affect the free radicals which is freely available within the biological system so here what will happen this is going to prevent the 
damage prevent the damage before the damage is going to happen so further many antioxidants work by transiently becoming radicals themselves so in the sense that these antioxidants they are going to be in the form of the stable molecules only but when they their function is has to be performed they are going to act as the free radicals in the sense they are going to either readily accept the electron present in the free radical that is the oxygenated free radical or they are going to donate their electron to the free radical molecule so the free radical molecule which is highly reactive and can damage the biomolecular structure with element so that can be avoided so even after the reaction this particular antioxidants are going to be present as the stable free radicals and the free radicals is get is already got neutralized in the same manner when you are going to consider these antioxidants they are going to present in two kinds that is endogenous that is within the body of the organism exogenous where the organism is going to intake the antioxidants through its nutrient now here antioxidants are also known as free radical scavengers scavengers in the sense they are going to readily affect the free radicals oxidant free radicals present within the body or the cell or the tissue or in the body environment and they are going to clean those free radicals action and further they are going to make them stable though so further they should not make any homeostatic distress they should not create any homeostatic distress the body makes some of the endogenous oxidants that it uses to neutralize free radicals that we have spoken these antioxidant molecules are present in all life forms so here when you are going to consider the endogenous form of the antioxidants they are present in all life forms all life forms from bacteria to mammals indicating their appearance early in the history of life so as the life has got existed this free this antioxidant endogenous antioxidants has got appeared that is what the meaning now when you are going to consider this how this antioxidant is going to work when you are going to consider this diagram under this the damaging free radical will be present like this where electron has to be transferred either by donating or accepting that is the free radical under this when you are going to subject the antioxidant here is the uh, antioxidant which is already stable with it octet that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 electrons in its outer orbit is already present and here it is going to reduce itself by donating a electron to the free radical which is already in the excited or highly reactive state so here what is happening here after donating this free radical forms a stable radical neutralized free radical now this particular antioxidant is going to get converted to a stable free radical it is not unstable highly reactive <coughs> free radical it is a stable free radical now when you are going to consider this is the mechanism how it is going to work certainly in some cases even the free radicals are going to react with the antioxidants where the both the molecules are going to keep attached and they are they can become a dipolar or dimagnetic kind of the molecules so here when you are going to consider the further diagram as we have discussed here two kinds of antioxidants are present one is the endogenous other is the exogenous antioxidant here you can see the antioxidants which are endogenous they are going to be like enzymatic and non-enzymatic non-enzymatic in the sense within the body itself it will be circulated that is 
ग्लोटथयोन थायरो रेडॉक्सिन युबिक्विनोन युरिक ॲसिड लिपोइक ॲसिड अँड वायलरुबिन डेफिनेटली दे दे कॅन ॲक्ट ॲज दि नॉन एन्झायमॅटिक काइंड ऑफ दि एंडोजिनियस अँटी ऑक्सिडंट्स अट अँड अप्रोप्रिएट थ्रेशोल्ड कॉन्सन्ट्रेशन ग्रेडियंट रिक्वायर्ड काइंड ऑफ दि प्रोडक्शन इफ इवन दिस आर गोईंग टू इन्क्रीज इन हाय नंबर डेफिनेटली इट इज गोईंग टू लीड टू दि डिफरंट मेडिकल सिमटम्स बट हिअर अट दि ऑप्टिमम थ्रेशोल्ड प्रोडक्शन दे आर डेफिनेटली ॲक्टिंग टू बी ॲज दि वन ऑफ दि स्कॅवेंजर्स ऑर दि एंडोजिनियस अँटी ऑक्सिडंट्स दि अदर एन्झायमॅटिक दॅट इज दि कॅटलेस सुपर ऑक्साईड डिस्म्युटेस ग्लुटथयॉन पेरॉक्सिडेस सो ऑल दिस थ्री इज दि मेजर मेजर फॉर्म ऑफ दि एंडोजिनस अँटी ऑक्सिडंट वेअर दिस एंडोजिनस अँटी ऑक्सिडंट्स ऑर ऑलवेज रेडिली अवेलेबल इन दि सेल्स ऑफ दि ऑर्गनिझम सो दिस इज रिगार्डिंग दि एंडोजिनस अँटी ऑक्सिडंट फर्दर इज दि एक्सोजिनस अँटी ऑक्सिडंट दिस आर वन विच वी आर गोईंग टू टेक थ्रू अवर न्यूट्रियंट्स सो हिअर विटमिन सी ए ई के आर दि फोर अँटी ऑक्सिडंट्स अँड बीटा कॅरोटीन युविक्युनॉन पॉलिफिनॉल्स अंडर दिस पॉलिफिनॉल्स फिनॉलिक ॲसिड्स फ्लेवनॉइड्स इन दि फ्लेवनॉइड्स यू कॅन सी सो मेनी टाईप्स क्वारसिटेन इज वन ऑफ दि मेजर विट वी आर टेकिंग अँड इट हॅज दि हाय एफिशियन्सी ऑफ स्कॅवेंजिंग दि फ्री रॅडिकल वेन कम्पेअर टू सी विटमिन ए सी अँड ई अँड के विटमिन सी इज हॅविंग दि हाय रेंज ऑफ दि स्कॅवेंजिंग ऑफ दि फ्री रॅडिकल वेअर ॲज क्वारसिटीन इज ऑल्सो गोईंग टू बी गोईंग टू फॉल अंडर दि सेम वेअर दि इन्फ्लुएनॉट्स दि दि फर्स्ट इम्पॉर्टंट ऑर प्राईम अँटी ऑक्सिडंट इज दि क्वारसिटीन वेन ॲज यू कॅन सी दि नेम्स लाईक फ्लेवनॉल्स फ्लेवो फ्लेवॉन्स फ्लेवनॉल्स फ्लेवनॉन्स आयसोफ्लेवॉन्स अँड अँथोसायनिन अँड ऑल्सो देर इज दि रिझर्व एरोट्रॉल अँड क्युर्क्युमिन सो दिस आर दि फ्यू एक्सोजिनियस व्हेरी प्रॉमिनंट अँड व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट काइंड ऑफ दि अँटी ऑक्सिडंट्स विच आर स्टडीड इन दि मेडिकल फील्ड वेअर दे हॅव दि पोटेन्शियल टू हायली रेक्टिफाय दि प्रेझन्स ऑफ दि फ्री रॅडिकल विथ इन दि बायोलॉजिकल सिस्टम नाव so here these act as the protection against these free radicals so here these antioxidants readily act to neutralize and stabilize the oxidant free radicals further coming to the next slide enzymatic antioxidants here you can see the function of the superoxide dismutase कॅटलेस ग्लुटथायन पोरॉक्सिडेस अँड फर्दर हिअर यू कॅन सी दॅट एन्झाईम दिस एस ओ डी सुपरऑक्साईड डिस्म्युटेस डिस्म्युटेसस सुपरऑक्साईड डिस्म्युटेसस कॉल टू बी ॲज दि एन्झाईम दॅट कॅटलायजेस दि कन्व्हर्शन ऑफ टू सुपरऑक्साईड्स इन टू हायड्रोजन पोरॉक्साईड यू कॅन सी अँड ऑक्सिजन दि बेनिफिट here is that hydrogen peroxide is substantially less toxic that superoxide compared to the superoxide the hydrogen peroxide radical is less toxic so the superoxide dismutase converts the superoxide to hydrogen peroxide and here further superoxide dismutase accelerates the this detoxifying reaction roughly 10000 fold over the non catalyzed reaction here the meaning is that there is certain non catalyzed reaction where there will be there will be the formation of the superoxide to the hydrogen peroxide but compared to the reaction frequency the frequency of the superoxide dismutase enzyme where it is going to catalyze the reaction at the 10000 fold 10000 fold 
compared to the non-catalyzing form where there is no action of the enzyme so here further is superoxide dismutase or metal containing enzymes that depend on a bound manganese copper or zinc for their antioxidant activity in mammals the manganese containing enzyme is most abundant in mitochondria while the enzyme or copper forms from predominant in cytoplasm interestingly superoxide dismutases are inducible enzymes exposure of bacteria or vertebra it sells to higher concentrations of oxygen results in rapid increase in the concentration of superoxide dismutase now here you you have come across the very prominent uh, role of this superoxide dismutase where if there is any infection by the bacteria or the pathogen or any oxygen resulted form of the reaction happens and there is the formation of the superoxides so here we have already spoken about the macrophage or the phagocytosis where there will be the action of the bacteria and uh, due to that there will be the re reaction of or the production of the oxygen species reactive oxygen species so here what will happen during those times what will happen this particular superoxide dismutase is going to be secreted or the on the high high amount and the concentration is going to increase in that particular location to neutralize the whatever the free radicals are going to form so this is what the action of the superoxide dismutase next is the catalase catalase is found in peroxisomes in eukaryotic cells it degrades hydrogen peroxide to water now the overall thing is has has been solved and water and oxygen and hence finishes the de detoxification reaction started by SOD so it is a cycle of reaction so further is glutathione peroxidase is a group of enzymes the most abundant of which contain selenium these enzymes like catalase degrade hydrogen peroxide even this is going to catalyze the hydrogen peroxide they also reduce organic peroxides to alcohol so when they are going to catalyze the hydrogen peroxide to water or the alcohol here this is going to be one of the finest form to detoxify the particular cell or the tissue and this can be easily removed from the body of the organism in addition to these enzymes glutathione transferase ceruloplasmin hemoxygenase and possibly several other enzymes may participate in enzymatic control of oxygen radicals and their products now what we have discussed about the superoxide dismutase catalase glutathione peroxidase this we have already discussed during the source of the production of the free radicals let me see the, that slide also so that you can understand the interaction of this particular explanation now here you can see that in this reaction we have spoken about the action of the superoxide dismutase where the superoxide will be converted to hydrogen peroxide okay and also we have also we have spoken about the electron transport chain here you can see in this diagram where there will be the formation of the superoxide where the superoxide or the coenzyme q so here what will happen this superoxide will be going to come under the manganesium superoxide dismutase you have we, we have discussed this manganese presence of the in the superoxide dismutase now itself in the slide of antioxidants endogenous antioxidants where it is going to react this particular superoxide and reduce it to or form it into the or convert it to the h2o2 whereas further this will be reduced to oh in the presence of the metal ion in the sense that h2o2 is going to get converted to reduce to the oh in the presence of the fe2 which we have discussed during the oxygen abundant superoxide free radical formation and also 
we can see here in this diagram the catalase which reduces the h2o2 to water and oxygen you can see catalase h2o2 to and here glutathione which is going to reduce this into the water here you can see in this also you can see that there is the formation of the non catalyzed form of the superoxide to the hydrogen peroxide here where this has been taken into consideration by the glutathione detectors and it is going to reduce this to the water and it is going to subject it to the nox that is the nox is again the fox reaction which we have already spoken so here we no need to discuss that so here this is what so na h2 o2 now here glutathione reductase is going to take part in the reduction of the h2o2 into water you can see here now further endo or exogenous toxins or compounds has been recycled or safe compounds so this is what we have discussed in this enzymatic antioxidants these are the three group of enzymes now here again in this diagram you can see that the these all these are the free radicals and this is the endogenous sources of the free radical formation okay and here this is the antioxidant defense which is going to act here like the catalase sod superoxide dismutase glutathione and non enzymatic systems like glutathione vitamins a c and e now here this is going to reduce this and exogenous sources like the ultraviolet light ionizing radiation and these are going to cause this formation of this now here all these are going to create a hemostasis actually in this flow chart as there are the free radicals here and the arrow marks has been respectively placed like the straight one diagonal and diagonal here if the antioxidants are going to act on this free radicals the homeostasis is going to be normal growth and the metabolism will be normal so if there is the exogenous sources here they are going to generate the free radicals and the effect will be less but the impaired physiological functions will take place and decrease proliferation response defective host defenses will be seen now here when you are going to consider the endogenous sources the homeostasis is going to be having more impaired physiological functions that is the random cellular damage specific signaling pathway is going to be seen where the damage will be seen in that and aging di disease and cell deaths will be seen so this is what regarding this particular picture depiction so we will go to the next slide non enzymatic antioxidants these are also three non enzymatic antioxidants so here it is the vitamin e vitamin c and glutathione here the glutathione transfer uh, what do you call peroxidase or the glutathione transferase which we have spoken here and glutathione peroxidase are different from this one this one is the nutrient which we which we are going to intake here this is the synthesized form of the enzymes now here vitamin e is the major lipid soluble antioxidant and plays a vital role in protecting membranes from oxidative damage its primary activity is to trap peroxy radicals in cellular membranes further vitamin c or ascorbic acid is a water soluble oxidant antioxidant that can reduce radicals from a variety of source it also appears to participate in recycling vitamin e radicals interestingly vitamin c also functions as pro oxidant under certain circumstances both functions as the pro oxidant in the free radical scavenging whereas vitamin c is going to recycle the 
radical formed by the vitamin E. Vitamin E is the one of the antioxidant which is going to trap or scavenge the peroxy radicals specifically and here whereas the glutathione may well be the most important intracellular defense against damage by reactive oxygen species it is the tripeptide glutamyl cysteinyl glycine the cysteine provides an exposed free sulfhydryl group that is very reactive providing an abundant target for radical attack reaction with radicals oxidizes glutathione but the reduced form is regenerated in a redox cycle involving glutathione reductase and electron acceptor NADPH now here when this particular glutathione going to react with the free radical and it is going to scavenge after getting scavenged whatever the reduced glutathione or oxidized glutathione will be present it has to be recycled with the help of the NADPH electron acceptor and also the glutathione reductase so here this is water and now here you can see this particular diagram where there will be the production of a formation of the free radicals which act here and there will be the re reduction or the action of the antioxidant enzymes which are endogenous and it is it will be neutralized further if there is no endogenous action due to the high abundant formation of the free mm -hmm. radical then it will be this uh, the free radical is going to get into the contact with the either the vitamin e vitamin c and glutathione they are they are going to take part in this action whereas if there is the any peroxide radicals the vitamin e is going to take part in its action and after the the action of the vitamin e vitamin e chromonoxyl radical will be formed where it is going to reduce to this and it will be recycled by the vitamin c so here as the ascorbyl radical further the glutathione is going to reduce the glutathione uh, ascorbyl radical and it is going to <coughs> what called neutralize the free radical like this the cycle is going to take part so here certainly individually this vitamin e c and glutathione they can trap the free radicals and also their phenomenal phenomenal form also they are going to show this particular cycle so here i have spoken very brief amount of the features about this particular enzymatic and non-enzymatic form of the antioxidants if you have any doubts or anywhere i have missed or i have given any wrong information please mention in the comments so that i can rectify and this completes these slides and i hope i have provided much which is required during this during the explanation of the topics and please uh, help me by subscribing to my channel and also liking the videos if you come across they are beneficial to you and also help me by providing the feedback either if it is good or if it is bad also so here please uh, share this channel link with your friends if you find any wrong explanation please mention in the comments so that uh, i can avoid and also if there is any mistakes in the presentation during presentation either the volume or any other thing or the voice or the pitch of the or, or the speed of the explanation if you find anything different or anything uneasy please help me so that i can rectify thank you very much thank you very much for uh, watching these slides on video and uh, be tuned we will come with different topics and even you also can provide the topics to uh, prepare and uh, produce 
in the form of this uh, seminar slides so thank you very much